Uh, good morning. Um, good morning to you, Phoebe. How are you? Good morning. I'm quite well, thank you. Feeling right. um, feeling great today with a lot of energy mm. for some reason. Right. Today is Wednesday, and um, the local um, the normal belief is that today is Ladies' Day. Wednesday for uh, the ladies. Right. And, uh, we hope that the ladies would definitely prove that today is actually the day. And maybe buying us lunch at a YV. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought it was supposed to be the other way around, where you guys would treat us to lunch. <laughs> anyway, that's what I was thinking, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if that's not how it's going to be done, that's okay. Mm. Um, I've had people ask me questions out of curiosity about um, some of the mysteries, for lack of a better word, should I put it there. Um, some of the mysteries of how the presenters roll um, for our dual presentations. Mm. So a couple of people have asked me, mm. do you guys pre-plan what you're wearing? <laughs> the answer to that is no. <laughs> it's a no. Right. But sometimes, out of coincidence, we get to match on mm. colors. It's, right. it's purely coincidence. Right. But there's no such... Um, Planning it's for never us, planned. like, oh, we're doing it's this color planned. thing today. Or no, we don't, we don't, do, we don't do that. It's never planned. <laughs> but you know, like they said, like minds, thinkers. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> and good morning um, to all of you, our viewers and listeners from across um, Sierra Leone, the continent, and the rest of the globe. This is how we welcome you to this edition uh, of the, and so this midweek edition of the program Wake Up Sierra Leone on AYV. Beautiful mm. Wednesday it is. Um, so after the um, Hilda Bassi, um, mm. uh, um, after Hilda challenged in the Guinness World Record that Lata Tandon had set with the um, 100 hours cooking, um, I saw some, you know, things on social media. Mm. Uh, some people were throwing shades at some of our slay queens in Sierra Leone. <laughs> but hey, Sierra Leone does have a Guinness World Record. Mm. For those of you who probably have forgotten or don't know, in 2012, um, former Miss Sierra Leone, Maria Tukabo, who lives in China, came to Sierra Leone and she organized the largest Sampa dance of 1,002 people at the Shiaki Stevens Stadium. Mm -hmm. And Guinness World Record approved that record. And yes, so you can check that online. Mm -hmm. Sierra Leone does have a Guinness World Record for the largest Sampa dance. That's since 2012. And nobody has What is Sampa able dance? It's a... Uh, would you just want to, so that our, our, our viewers can actually know? Samuel, almost he gets. I can do the Sampa dance, but let's talk numbers. You know me, time is money. My mm. time is expensive. Mm. Let's talk. How much are you paying me to do the Sampa dance? I'm pretty dance sure well? our, our viewers will celebrate. <laughs> <you>. <laughs> but yeah, we have that. The largest Sampa dance. It's, uh, it's Sierra Leone's um, record on mm. Guinness World Record. So yes, don't bother us. Don't trouble us. Don't trouble us. Don't trouble us. Mm. And we know Ashley Queens do cook too in Sierra Leone, so. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, when you celebrate other people's records, it's, it's, it's not just to celebrate and bar the people, it's you, you celebrate. Celebration doesn't have to come with a competition. Right. That's, um, that's kind of somehow, in my opinion, brings mm -hmm. some amount of toxicity to that. You can celebrate people without comparing people. Right. It's just. I can celebrate, oh Samuel, you look really good. Your right. suit looks good without saying, oh Samuel, your suit looks good. Right. Or oh, Phoebe and your suit don't know. You can compliment people and celebrate them without right. making somebody else look stupid. Relative. Yeah. Fine. And uh, I see our technical director is already moving over to our studio too, to <laughs> prompting us to get the new summary to our, lo to our lovely audience out there. But um, remember, you can always um, reach us or listen and watch us on AYV television on Channel 53 and BSTV, Channel 399, Radio FM 11.7 on our different social media platforms. Today is Wednesday, the 17th day in the month of May. I think it's about 37 days to the polls uh, in June. Um, for Sierra Leone's multi-tier elections. My name is Samuel Weisbangura. And I am Vivian Sweel. Thanks for joining us this morning, but also take the conversation to Facebook. Uh, search for AYV News, drop a comment or question there, and we would make an effort to read your questions and comments during the program. But before we delve into what's coming up in the program, we're heading to Studio 2 to join David Remy Wilson, 
All the top stories in the news. Good morning, David. Yes, good morning, Phoebe. Good morning, Samuel. Well, in our top stories this morning, the country's vice president, Dr. Mohamed Jude Jalo, has noted that government is taking steps to repealing the 1902 Lassini Act to address cross cultural approach and meet international best practices to address mental health issues. He made this comment during the launch of the Presidential Task Force on Mental Health Continental Learning Session learning season um, that focuses on developing mental health legislation in Africa. Today, the 1902 Lunacy Act has not changed over the years. However, as a government, we have taken steps to repeal and replace the 1902 Lunacy Act with modern mental health legislation, with a modern mental health legislation that is clear to oriented and social culturally appropriate and one that meets or even exceeds international best practices. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as a government, we remain committed to guaranteeing the rights of every one of our citizens. In another story, the European Union ambassador to Sierra Leone, Manuel Muller, has reaffirmed the European Union's commitment to long-term partnership between Sierra Leone and the European Union while supporting initiatives leading to a better business and investment climate that will enhance a broad-based and inclusive economic growth and development. I made this comment during the celebration of the Europe Day uh, celebration at Gadison Blue Mamioko Hotel in Freetown. The European Union looks forward to continuing this fruitful dialogue with Sierra Leone which also includes matters on the agenda of the United Nations Security Council. Distinguished guests, in 2021, following close coordination with all relevant stakeholders, the European Union adopted a bilateral cooperation program of 245 million euros for the period 2021 to 2024. The partnership and cooperation between the EU and Sierra Leone for this period focuses on three priority areas, all closely interrelated. Firstly, the European Union supports Sierra Leone's green economy. By that I mean fostering the creation of decent jobs, as well as green economic transformation, increasing access to sustainable energy for jobs and growth, development, of employment-oriented, sustainable agriculture food system. And finally, police in Kenema are investigating one Fuad Sisi for unlawful possession of some fake 20 leons note in the tune of 49,000 leons. Fuad was arrested by officers attached to the Wanjama um, police post in the outskirts of Kenema city. The police at Wanjama checkpoint intercepted um, a middle-aged forward CC and uh, upon search at the checkpoint he was found in possession of 49,000 uh, New Leon's currency and uh, when you look at it closely you can realize that uh, it has some element of counterfeit so the said amount was conveyed to the regional headquarters here and together with the suspects and the preliminary investigation has already begun and uh, we are trying to see how it all happened. People need to be very very careful, more so those business women who do their businesses in the night. They have to confirm the authenticity of uh, currency before they can transact. Because in as much as we have started arresting these, it could be uh, it could be that uh, such has circulated among or within the community. All right, that's all we have in our top stories this morning. Back to Samuel and Phoebe in our main studios. All right, many thanks, um, David Remy Wilson, for bringing us some of the top stories in the news. Coming up in the show this morning, we shall be discussing the Bank of Sierra Leone's Amendment Act 2023, authorizing the use of other currencies in the country for transaction purposes under some conditions that the bank would be speaking to us about. And 5050 uh, Group, CGG, and Send Sierra Leone launch Sierra Leone Women's 2023 Manifesto.
calling on registered political parties for the June 24 elections to integrate women's priority policy issues into their manifestos. And we shall be speaking to one of Sierra Leone's renowned journalists, Mama Jajalo, also known as DJ Base, on his return to AYB. Right, our quote for today says that the equal right of all citizens to health, education, work, food, security, culture, science, and well-being. That is the same right we proclaimed when we began our struggle, in addition to those which emerge from our dreams of justice and equality for all inhabitants of our world. It's what I wish for all. And it comes from Fidel Castro, a Cuban revolutionary politician who also served as Cuban president from 1976 to 2008. And with that, let's get a quick word from our sponsor, Okel Commercial Bank, and we will be right back. Every day, the world wakes up to you. Millions of people are getting ready for you. For shopping, travel expenses, utility bills, trade, and commerce. If we all have wishes, then what is your financial transaction wish? I'd like to have a choice. I'd like convenience. I'd like to pay for goods and services on the go. I'd like to pay utility bills on the go. Out of credit and data, buy some mobile top up, still on my phone. Oops, light out. I'll buy some Etsa, still on my phone. I'd like to make payment from my account to another account through my mobile phone. As a share of a company, I would like my staff to receive their salaries to bulk e payment without the risk of transporting cash. Raquel Commercial Bank Simcopo does it all. Raquel Commercial Bank Simcopo. Think of it as money when you're close to home and when you're away from home for unexpected expenses and money for those times when cash fails. If you can dream it, you can become it. If you can imagine it, you can achieve it. Raquel Commercial Bank Simcopo is all you need. Right, uh, welcome back. Thanks for staying with us through that break. This is Wake Up Sierra Leone here on AYV Television and Radio. As always, we encourage you to be a part of the conversation by just joining us on Facebook. Search for AYV News and uh, leave a comment or question and we would make a conscious effort to read them out. And I just noticed that um, Katab, uh, welcome. Katab is informing us that he's in Sierra Leone. Welcome. Right. If you are chanced, you can pay a visit to AYV, and yes, you would see us at AYV, but welcome. All right, Kathab Yukuruma, you're welcome to Sierra Leone. And now in our first segment, the 5050 Group Sierra Leone campaign for good governance and send Sierra Leone in partnership with Irish Aid, Truckee and Christian Aid have launched Sierra Leone Women's 2023 Manifesto. The manifesto calls on registered political parties for the June 24th elections to integrate women's priority policy issues into their manifestos. So this morning, to discuss the issue, we have with us Aisata Jabikaba, a female politician who was also the president of the All Political Parties Women's Association and um, women's leader of the National Grand Coalition Party. Um, good morning and welcome to for show. Good morning. Mm. Thank you. All right, um, from Campaign for Good Governance, we have a representative here with us um, this morning. Um, good morning and welcome to Wake Up Australian, sir. Yeah, good morning. Mm. Um, you have to forgive us. Please um, mention your name. 
I am Henry Jabati, Programs Officer, Campaign for Good Government. Thank you, Henry. Um, let, let's start off first. Um, let's have a baseline, um, Madam Kaba. Let's have a baseline as to where we are. You know, the fight for the, for the emancipation of women, especially um, getting them around the table, making critical um, um, decisions, including them around the table. How has it been? Have we been able as a nation to actually say, oh, I think, yes, we're getting there. We are, we are, we are on the path to get into where we should be. Well, somewhere to some extent, I can say yes, we're on the path of getting there. Because uh, if you look at our struggles, we've been fighting for this 30% quota for quite a long time. Immediately after the war, the TRC mandate, uh, mandated the country to give us 30% quota representation at all levels, mm -hmm. which did not happen, you know. Government in, government out, have been making a lot of promises to us. We've been drafting bills here and there, and we'll take the bills, maybe. I mean, the last bill stopped at uh, the registrar's office, right. at the uh, DPP's office. We stopped there. But 2021, 2022, 2023, we've seen a major uh, breakthrough in that, mm -hmm. because looking at the Giwi bill, which really created mm -hmm. the opportunity for women to have more representation, not only at the local uh, council, parliament, mm -hmm. but at all levels of uh, representation. So for me, I will say we are getting there. Right. And also, if you look at what is happening now, when I checked at the NEC uh, data, mm -hmm. we have 37 point something percent of women that have been nominated, mm -hmm. that have been given symbols across political party lines. So for me, I think we are getting there. Mm -hmm. You know, right. I can say categorically clear that we are, we are on the path of getting about thirty percent quota and even more. Mm. And also looking at the the, the current uh, president, yeah. the political will is there because, for me, I will say if he didn't want to give us the thirty percent quota, there is no way he was going to sign the gender the, the mm. Gui bill. But signing that bill is a major breakthrough for women for the women of Sierra Leone. Right. Continue to stay with us. Let's just quickly get a brief overview from Henry on what the Women's Manifesto is all about. What are the critical issues that are captured in that manifesto that political parties should run with? Yeah, um, a lot of um, issues. Um, Samuel, as you um, rightly mentioned, uh, we have launched the Women's Manifesto on the 11th of this um, month at the bank complex um, CLU. Mm -hmm. And um, the manifesto is for political parties. It's uh, like a wake-up call to political parties to include um, the issues of mm -hmm. um, women into their uh, manifestos. You and I um, know that um, most times um, women have been um, noticed or seen as a vulnerable people. And um, looking at these um, political um, parties and we as um, civil society, we want to put them on their toes. That is why for them not to take extraordinary time or for them to know the issues um, of what women want across the country. So what we did in a collaborative work with St. Sierra Leone, 50-50, um, Irish Aid and Christian Aid and other um, civil society organizations, we did a regional consultation. We are in, we um, targeted women, um, lawyers, women, uh, market women of all different um, sectors. Mm. We are in, we, 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 we bring them together, we deliberate on issues. They tell us what they want mm. on health, on political participation, on um, of, of their voice in our governance mm -hmm. and all those other things. So what we did was to put it in a one um, book to say, okay, political parties, we are helping you to know the issues of what women want in the country. Mm -hmm. So across the 16 districts of Sierra Leone, the issues we are um, put together, we hired a consultant. She was able to give us a very um, good work and uh, because of the issues are plenty or many. So what we did is to put them into 20 um, parts of recommendations mm. to say these are the key what, things. What are they? What are the, 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 the key areas? What well, are the key issues being, uh, being raised? Some of the key um, areas we, we look at health. Mm -hmm. You and I know that um, a lot of maternal death, when um, pregnant women go to hospital, they, we, we, we know that a lot of death during um, childbirth and uh, care in hospital. You can go to the um, government hospital there. You can notice that a lot of um, care is not given uh, to women. Mm -hmm. Even the free health um, um, care, a woman can tell you, I'm still buying medicine 
when I am at hospital with my child or with my children, mm -hmm. or when giving birth, they will tell you there is no um, proper um, toilet facility or there is no proper bed facility. So these are the are some of the things we look at 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 health, and it's not coming from us. It is coming from what the women want. That is why we did a regional consultation. We bring women uh, together. The other part that so we these are the problems highlighted by the women across Sierra Leone. Across Sierra Leone, so, um, did they also provide solution? How they want these issues to be addressed by the political parties? Well, all what they will tell you is that go there, advocate for us, tell them this is what we need. Hmm. Please see that the government or any ruling um, government that happens to be in power, see to these needs, see to uh, our attention, this is what we need, this is what we are going to, these are constraints, so please advocate for us. That is why within the Women's Manifesto, we also develop what we call the advocacy process tool. We are in, these are the issues we have put together, but we, are, we keep on advocating to the political parties to say, okay, if you are putting them or including into your manifestos, please make sure you see that it is done. That is why we are going also to do uh, a presentation to political parties. We are in, we'll meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, give them the manifesto, get, take them through the recommendations again, and uh, we still continue to rally around them as a tool and of advocacy. Stay with us. Let, let's bring in um, Mrs. Kabain to the conversation again. I mean, these are, are critical issues over time. They are monumental um, in the land. Many issues, I mean, many problems um, women are faced with. But um, in, in your quest to empower women and create that space for them to be recognized and included, and of course, um, policies are made around the protection and promotion of their rights. Now, what are some of the obstacles you've been able to identify? Um, is talking about the citizens, man the, sorry, the women's manifesto, and of course, talking about health, which is fundamental for women especially. So, what are some of the obstacles that you've been able to identify, and how can political parties run with them to ensure that after the June polls, women take center stage? For me, I think it's the political will. Because, Samuel, as I said earlier on, we've been struggling not only to be represented right you understand but for our voices to be heard you know if the political will is not there it is difficult because for us the women we've done our own part we've trained our women build their capacities they are available across political party lines and even those that don't belong to political parties they are there ready to lead mm. but if the political will is not there no matter what we do is going to be difficult for us. So for me, that's where I really want our, political, our politicians mm -hmm. to stop paying lip service to women's empowerment. We want to see whatever they put in their manifestos, because for, they can put all what is in the women's manifesto in their own political party manifesto. Right. But if the political will is not there, it will just be on paper. Mm -hmm. It has been happening. This is not the first time we are having a women, we are having women's manifesto. This is not the first, first time uh, civil society and women's organizations have been making a lot of resolutions, have been writing papers, mm. have been making suggestions to governments in, government out. But it has just been paying lip service to whatever we say. They will stand there in public and say, oh yes, the women have spoken, we're going to make sure we give them what they want. At the end of the day, if the political will is not there, if the, sitting, if the uh, one that is leading us is not ready, to give us what we want. It's going to be difficult. So for me, that's where I stand. Mm -hmm. it, the political will has to be there. Whosoever happens to be the next president of Sierra Leone has to make sure that whatever is in that women's manifesto mm -hmm. be reflected in our status, not just on paper. Let, let's take a step back before we look at um, you know, the work of the president when it comes to appointments. We're heading to elections next month. And part of that UE Act, uh, 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 speaks as well to even the the the, the symbols for, for for women. Now we have these political parties who they agreed to getting women, um, you know, 30 percent representation in the nominations. But the challenge and the concern has been the positioning on the list. Uh, we've had Ibrahim Tomi here, for example, talk about if the women are not on the first or second on that list it still drastically reduces the chances of women making a 30% quota in parliament. And we've seen the political parties agree to support women, but with the list submitted, 
No, the women are not on the first and second. So again, it comes back to would we be even getting the 30% quota in parliament? It seems like a cat and mouse game with, you know, civil society media and the politicians. What progress are we really making? Well, for me, I don't know, but I want to say whether, whether you like it or not, hmm? Hmm. we have two big, two major political parties that has uh, women across the country. Hmm? And if you look at their, 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 their list, at least it's encouraging compared to what happened last, during the last elections. It's encouraging for me. Because during the last elections, it was constituency-based elections. Let me but come, I, let me the, the thing is, the point with the um, um, Gui Act, the goal ultimately is to get 30% representation of women, not to feign 30% of representation. Because I, again, coming back to the point Ibrahim Tommy was making, if you don't put the women on the right part of the list, or not at your strongholds. It comes back to, you would submit a list that has 30% and above. But the reality is, post-election, you would not have 30% women in these offices. Coming back to my point, I still go back to say, it's encouraging. Take for example, there are some districts that don't even have one female as a single councillor. One. But as I speak to you, at least every district, we are sure of having not just one member of parliament, but three. Three. I bet you that. Take places like Kailao district. We have four women that are on the front, well, how can I call it? On the first 10, we have four women, and those women are sure of going to parliament. Take districts like Pujang. They never had a single woman as a parliamentarian. But at least today, we can boast of having three women on that list. We've been monitoring the list. Yes, you don't expect, like for example, some political parties can just put women on their list. They, they can afford to put 20 women on their list. But can they, have, can they really have the votes to take them to parliament? No. So that's why for me as a politician, I don't base my analysis on having 13 political parties having a lot of women on their list. No. I want, I, I'm, basi, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna base my own assessment on political parties that I know that come what may, they are going to be in that parliament. So coming back to the Women's Manifesto, the point is, if we have politicians making verbal commitment to support certain things, but then when it comes to the actions they take, they, they don't seem to back up the verbal commitment, what assurances do we have that, you know, the Women's Manifesto would mean anything serious to these political parties? But again, let me tell you, that's why I started off by saying the political will has to be there. If you look at the uh, ECSL, the way that we are doing their nominations, if you don't put, for example, we're saying after every two men, there has to be a woman. The system rejects your, your list. So for me, that was very encouraging for me. Because there was no way any sober-minded politician would say, you want, you want to escape that route. So it, it was, they were forced to do it, not that they were willing to do it. They were forced to do it. So what strategy should we implement now to get the politicians to accept and run with the Women's Manifesto? The only strategy we have now is the one that is going to be President of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Nominations have been closed. We now have the women on the, on the list. What we are waiting for now is for us to have a free, fair and peaceful elections. Because at the end of the day, when I was looking at the Women's Manifesto, the one that interests me most is the, is the violence against women. We saw what happened in 2018. Women were raped, gang raped and beaten. Nothing happened. Nobody was brought to justice. And these are the deterring factors that really discourage women from coming out. I was telling somebody, oh, IJ, the women don't want to come out. They are there. Who said so? Ask us to give you 50 women if you want to make them cabinet ministers. They are available, ready to lead. Ask us to give you 20 or 30 women to go to parliament. They are ready. But because, and that is why for me, I supported the PR system. Because it was less hazardous for women. Because we don't have money. Women don't have money to compete with the men. And looking at the, 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 the patriarchal nature of our political parties and the greediness of our men. Because all they want us to do for them is for us to dance where I should be, organize meetings for them when they want to uh, 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 
present us. Oh, we have the, uh, women. But when it comes to sharing the national cake, they don't want to give it to us. So for me, that is why I said the political will has to be there. Mm -hmm. Because we have seen politicians make a lot of promises to us. They will tell you, oh, the 30% person are going to give you. When it was time for us to take that bill to parliament, it stopped at uh, Lamina Sanko Street. It never came to parliament. So for me, that is why I started by saying the political will. And we are going to hold President Bio on his words. Even, ye was it yesterday or day before yesterday, he was making a statement, oh, I've given the women what they want. I've given them the 30% quota. So we are waiting now for the next president to make sure the 30% quota not only be on paper, but it has to be reflected in our status. We want to see in the cabinet, 30% quota women's representation. We want to see ambassadorial positions. We want to see even at the, the, the parastatals and other positions that are going to be appointed and seen. In the Women's Manifesto, uh, uh, I suppose you, you've mentioned there are quite a couple of things mentioned um, that the women of Sierra Leone have demanded for, or probably requested for. But then when it comes back to the reality of governance, there's a challenge, scarcity of resources, and the allocation of these resources in matters of priority. Where would you leave the negotiation? Paradventure, the government comes back to say, uh, we cannot do a number of things on that manifesto because we're challenged with resources. Where would you leave the negotiation? What would you settle for? Uh, Fibian, all I want to say here is, if any sitting president, you really want to develop Sierra Leone, you want to put Sierra Leone, you rebrand Sierra Leone, you want to put Sierra Leone on the map, you have to make sure you look into those issues. Because don't forget, we are 52% of the population. And how can you develop a country without bringing on board 52% of the population? Who are you developing? Who are you developing? So for me, I think, all what is on that manifesto, even if they did not do all, but the major ones has to be done. For example, the women's health. Because for me, if, my, if, if you don't take care of the women's health, how do you expect them to participate in what you want them to participate and in? And I was just going to throw that to Henry to ask. And uh, if you don't, let me come. Yes, if, you don't you, see, you if you don't see to read that the women are economically empowered, how do you expect them to progress? How do you expect them to compete with the men? It's going to be difficult. So for me, what is in that manifesto? That's what we're going to... Yes, it's, it's true, we've launched the manifesto, but what we're going to concentrate on that is our representation. Because there is this saying that if you are not on the table where decisions are being taken, if you are not on the table where decisions are being taken to, to help you to develop, there's no way you'll change that decision. There's no way you'll participate in that policy. So that is where what we are concentrating on now is for us to have our representation being increased in parliaments and the local level, in cabinet, at all decision making levels. So that at the end of the day, we'll go back and say, we have a document that we've prepared. This document is what we want President Bio, or whosoever becomes president, to look into. But that is why we want to fight to increase our level of participation. So that at the end of the day, when decisions have been discussed, policies have been taken, that will impact the lives of women, we are on that table in, en masse. We are on that table to make sure we change the dynamics of what has been the, the usual thing. Uh, Henry, what would, be, uh, what would you highlight as the priority areas of the manifesto? Because again, the reality is, uh, government would not have all the resources to implement everything in the women's manifesto. Uh, what, what are the priority areas in the manifesto? Well, um, Fibian, she's saying it already. That is we also make a recommendation for the full implementation of the Jewry Act and the economic empowerment of um, women. Doing so, I think you can get an equal um, opportunity of these um, resources. And uh, mind you, Fibian, government is always at the position to see that um, this um, equal resources is being shared, or has been shared to each and every um, individual in a state. And uh, you having representation of women into um, governance, I do believe it will be easier. That is why one of our recommendations, we said, ensure the full implementation of the gender equality and uh, women's empowerment. Yes, it is an act. It has been signed into an act. And uh, for us to see it come to reality or into full implementation, it are aims and objective. That is why within the uh, Women's Manifesto, I said in Italia, we have the advocacy tool. We are not going to sit back, full dance, 
after presenting these uh, manifestos to their politicians or the political parties, rather than we are, we are going to continue engaging them, putting them in a wake-up call to say, this is what you have to do, and this is what you will do. And uh, thank God the president has already sounded, and every day he is saying it, that he has given what the women want, but giving them is one. So we are saying now, what will they do to see that they fully implement the act? Health issues, you and I know, Fibian, it is worst. Political participation of women, political intimidation, political violence during elections has been affecting women across the country. As uh, Mrs. Kaba was saying, 2018, we all saw what happened. It is not a story. It is not new to all of us. So all this, we are telling them now, do something to stop them. What you have to do to stop them. And uh, coming back, any government that comes to power, I think we are going to rally around that government to say, if it's President Bio, we'll say, this is what you said. You said it, you signed it into law, so put it into implementation. If it's another government, then we are going to do the same thing, the advocacy tool. We are going to rally behind that government. Okay, you put it into manifesto, go back to your manifesto. That is why the first thing we want to see is that these things that we have recommended is into their manifesto, because that is how we are going to hold them Responsible. And Eli, it's Eli, not let's 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 get it this way. So I see a couple of things that the women's manifesto um, highlighted. You have women's socio-economic well-being and opportunities, women, human rights and the rule of law, women, climate change and the environment, women, peace, security and social cohesion, women's self, sexual and reproductive rights, women, democracy and good governance, women and political participation. These are the key highlights in the manifesto. Very now. The question over time has always been, there are, there are great plans. Even the, the politicians, when they go out, when they want to give out messages in cajoling us civil unions to vote, they have the most beautiful of messages to, to convince us. But what we've not asked over time is how. So did this manifesto talk about how will the politicians, be it President Bio, be it Dr. Samra Kamara, be it um, Mohamed Chelnoba, be it Mohamed Soat, whoever is elected president come um, June 24th, how would they go about the implementation and um, guaranteeing these rights to women? Yeah, yeah these are just recommendations, um, Samuel. That is why we'll keep on engaging them. The, 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 anybody that comes into power will, will have to tell us, how would you go about putting these things. I think that is one of the very most important questions we have been asking again. Mm. As you rightly mentioned, they have beautiful words, they have palatable words that they will give to us, for, to the people, for them to vote for them. Okay, after voting for them, how will you do that? I do believe during the advocacy tool or with these recommendations, they have to tell us, mm. Samuel. Say, okay, for women, reproductive health, this is what we are going to do to see it come into reality. Mm -hmm. That is why our main focus for now is for them to put these recommendations into their manifesto. Because leaving them behind, you, you, you don't have where to hold them responsible. So, so, sometimes what we've always agreed is that the politicians are not technocrats. Yeah, they're, very they're just they are trying to seek political power and represent um, the majority yes, of people. And political so, they, so sometimes they do not know how. So when documents like this come up, um, it, it is expected that these documents show the how. Tell them, these are things that can be achieved this way. Yeah. And w w in, in, in the absence of that, it feels like we're just joining the, poli the very politicians that, to just that, make fine pro um, that is why, policies. That is why if you go through the Women's Manifesto, the, the, the handbook, mm -hmm. thoroughly, you will get to know that one of the thematic things we hold to them is that if really you want these recommendations to come into reality, as what Mrs. Kaba was saying, it's very simple. Let the women be there themselves. Mm. If you want economic empowerment, if you, want, if you want political participation, let them be there for themselves. That is to say, we are decisions are making. They are there also to make those decisions. Mm. If you have, for example, if you have 10 men and you have only two women, I am sure that decision will not be hard. Mm. But if you have 10 men, nine women, 10 men, eight women, or as per, or if possible, 10 men, 10 women, I do believe all the, what we have mentioned as recommendations will come to reality. Trust me, Samuel, women are very strong in decision-making, and they are very firm after making decisions. And women 
also, after making decisions, they are always strong. They are uncompromisable to see those decisions they have made come into reality. So it is very simple if the government, if any sitting government or ruling government comes into power with all these recommendations, if they want to see it into reality, I am sure the representation of women in, in all those areas should be into their mind. Let them see. Let's Ms. put the women Ms. there. Mrs. Kaba, you, 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 you talked about having hope and that, I mean, there are clear signs of improvement in the space for women. Going back to the 2018 elections, um, we had two women as presidential candidates. Now, you come to the 2023 elections, we have only one woman that has been nominated as a presidential candidate. Um, that is um, from the Alliance Democratic Party. Now, at the time when we're expecting the space to have been widened enough for, to absorb more women, we're seeing at that presidential level a shrink in um, women coming forward or parties giving women opportunity to, I mean, be the face of those parties at the presidential level. So with, I mean, your optimism, your hopes, that enthusiasm you're expressing for the, uh, I mean, in the space, how do we balance that with the realities coming from political parties? Even at uh, the, execu the executive level of political parties, we're not seeing many women occupying that space, even meeting the 30% quota. You know, Samuel, this has been a problem for far too long. Mm. If you look at the nature of the structure of political parties, even to create space for women, besides the position of being a national women's leader, mm. regional women's leader, district, right. constituency, zona, mm -hmm. the other positions are very difficult for women to really occupy. And that was why when I was president of APWA, which uh, Phoebe had mentioned, mm -hmm. the first thing I did, I was president, I was national women's leader by then for the SLPP. Right. I did what they call the gender policy. And when I did that gender policy with the support of the UN, other political parties did their gender policies as well. We fought so hard because that gender policy created space for women, not only for us to be given that, uh, women's leader positions. Mm -hmm. We wanted to see women being national chairmen. We wanted to see women being organized in secretaries. We wanted to see women being secretary generals of their political parties. Even at that time, mm -hmm. the SRPP accepted that gender policy. We were expecting it to be part of the constitution because we were reviewing the constitution by then. Mm -hmm. It never happened. So, for other political parties also. So what they did, oh, we'll give you affirmative action. And for me, I hated that word. Mm -hmm. Because affirmative action was not uh, strong enough to create positions, uh, to create space for me right. at that level. I thought the gender policy was going to create that space, that mm -hmm. needed space. But as, it, as I sit here now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, you take all the political parties across the board. You don't have more women at the helm of things. Right. But again, it is because all what we are paying attention to is our representation in the local councils, our representation in parliament, mm -hmm. at cabinet levels as ambassadorial position, yeah. failing to realize that if we are not at the helm of things in our various political parties, mm -hmm. it is going to be difficult. Except if you have a leader that is genuine, interested in the empowerment of mm. women. And for me, that is what I have seen. And that is why I said earlier on that we are going to hold President Bill on his words. Yeah? We don't need, we don't have to, we don't really need to have a female president for us to see more women in cabinet. We have seen female president across Africa. They don't even have 10 women in cabinet positions. You can still be the president. Mm? You don't have that control. So it has to start at the lower level. If we see, if we achieve the 30% quota at the local councils, mm -hmm. we achieve it in parliament. We then vote and wait to achieve it in cabinet. I bet you 2028, you'll see a strong, assertive, capable presidential candidate as a woman. Mm. You know what, where I'm coming from? Right. So for me, having a female president in Sierra Leone, that will not. Yes, it will be symbolic. Oh, we have a female president. We have, we, we have four female uh, vice president, presidential candidates, candidates and right. one presidential candidate. But even for me, that is not enough. Because don't forget, Sierra Leone is big. You cannot wait to one, for one, uh, one month to elections 
and you now say I want to be president of Sierra Leone. We are because now everybody, even as a city, I have a candidate that I'm supporting. Mm -hmm. You don't expect me to now say I'm going to leave that candidate to support a woman because she's a woman coming in f just one month to elections. If I, I Jacob as I sit here, if I want to be president, I, I want to be flag bearer of my party, I won't wait for one month. No, I'll start preparing now for 2028. Mm. I'll start not only making myself visible in my party, but I'll be reaching out to women outside my political party. Because if I say I'm going to run on the ticket for women, the women, they need to know me. They need to start working with me to know my capabilities, to know if I'm ready for the task. Yeah, there's a symbolic case of that, for example. Let's take Femi Kuleria School, who's been out there. I mean, she's put herself out for the longest of time, expressing her interest, making bold decisions for is she, the president. Is she on the table? Is she on the ticket now? No. Hmm. So you see, it boils down again to women's economic empowerment. Even for the men, it is difficult to sustain new political parties. Hmm. Talking about a woman, it is difficult. Right. You see the two big political parties, they, they've been here for God knows how long. They have people that have benefited from those political parties. So come what may, they are ready and willing to spend money on those political right. parties. But for a new political party to survive in this country, it is difficult. Mm. So for Femi Claudia School, yes, she's vibrant, she's dynamic and everything. She has all the qualities to become president of, this country, uh, of Sierra Leone. But the party she has, she does not have the capacity. The party does not have that capacity to market Femi Claudia School. Let me tell you, there's this proverb in Creole. They say, if us not sell you, street they buy you. So mm -hmm. that us nigga for sell you, for let the street buy you. So you have to have a political party that has the base in this country, that has the human resource to stand not only by you, to stand with you. In, in, in that situation, I'm just curious. I, I, I can't resist the urge not to ask this question. That is to say, if, for example, um, Aysa Tajabi Kaba wants to become the, pre the next president of the Republic of Sierra Leone, irrespective of the political party you're coming from, people and Sierra Leoneans know you're qualified, you're capable, you're competent enough to lead this country and bring about the needed changes that we're calling for. Would there be a point in time that, irrespective, like I mentioned earlier, of your political party, that the women of this country there would be a resolution that whether I come from party green, party red, party mauve, party rainbow, party pink, there is a resolution to make I Jacob the president of this republic. So all resources will be pulled together just to support I Jacob, not just because she's a woman, but also because she's competent and can bring about that change that the nation looks forward to. Of course. Of course. Hmm. You know why? Tell me. I have been tested so many times. And I've been on the political limelight for quite a long time. From since my student days, eh? Hmm. You know, let me tell you, coming into politics, you don't, you don't just wake up one morning and say, I want to become president. No. You have to climb the ladder. For me, I've been vice president for a college student in this country under Omar Fofana. Mm -hmm. He went away for quite some time. I had to run. Frappe College Student Union, mm -hmm. right? From then, then I entered SLPP as a very young woman at 22. Mm. And I worked in the young generation wing of that party. I climbed the ladder. That's why when I contested for women's leader, and we said, oh, nice and no, I've worked for this party. Mm. And for three, tw uh, two times I contested, I won landslide victory. Mm. Yeah. And I, I think I've served this country in so many capacities. Mm. And because of my attributes, my capacities, and the way I relate to people. Let me tell you one thing, Samuel. Money is one thing, mm. but your relationship with the masses has a lot to do with you being at the helm of things. Mm. Yeah? So it's not only I, Jacob, we have other women right. that also has that attribute. When they come on board, the day you see that kind of woman come on board, you'll see we're going to have a different dynamics to politics. We'll forget about various political parties. We will stand by that woman, yeah? But if you Is that the voice of majority or minority? The voice of majority. Let me tell you, somebody has to have confidence in you mm. to give you political leadership. Somebody has to look at you and say, no, if I put IJ or if I put Fabian, she will make a change. She mm. will give me what I, I'm looking for. 
But if somebody is struggling to see that in you, that person will just risk her vote in you or his vote in you. Yes. Somebody has to see that in you. That, ah, if I put Ije Kaba there now, mm. she will bring change. She will give me what I want. She will put Sierra Leone on the uh, right map. She will fight for women. She will fight for the youth. She will fight for the marginalized group. But if you say you're going to be president, all I can see is you telling me, oh, this person is doing bad. You're not providing any solution to the problems. Hell no, I won't risk uh, my vote. You would hear people say that, uh, based on strongholds, there are certain areas where regardless of the candidate that the APC would put forward, they would vote that candidate. Regardless of the candidate that the SLPP would put forward, they would vote that candidate. So it comes down to APC and SLPP, the candidates they put forward. But with the way politics is going, with the level of women's involvement in these political parties, Samuel mentioned earlier that even the national executive of these political parties have certain positions where you don't hear of a woman. The chairman, for example, the publicity mm -hmm. secretary, with that being the thought in the minds of people that it takes the APC and the SLPP to deliver us a female candidate for presidency. Is there a possibility for us as a nation to ever get to that point like Liberia did when they had Ellen Johnson Sirleaf? Don't forget we've had a female vice presidential candidate in the SLPP, the person of Dr. Karisi. When President Bia was given the, the, the was appointed as the flag bearer, he nominated Dr. Karisi as his uh, uh, running mate. So for me, we'll get there when that kind of the time comes. And we are getting there slowly, eh? Mm -hmm. We are getting there slowly. I bet you 2028 is going to be a different ball game for the women of Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that now. <laughs> and, and let me tell you yes, something. You are talking about stronghold. As I sit here, hmm, I've seen people in APC supporting President Biu. Yes, they did not resign from the APC. They, they, they are part and parcel of the APC, but they are supporting President Biu. I was in Podloko two weeks ago and somebody said, I am APC. Look at my card, I'm not going to resign from the APC. But my presidential vote is going to be for President Biu. And I asked him why. He said, free quality education. The GIWI bill. And look at this airport, because the APC wanted to remove this airport from Lunge and take it to Mamama. For that singular reason, I'm going to support, I'm going to vote for President Bill. So let me tell you, the political dynamics is changing. People have started realizing that, ah, I'm not going to say because I was born in SLPP, I'm going to die there, even if they have a rotten candidate, I'm going to support it. No, people are not saying, the people are, are beginning to say, if I was born in APC, my father was APC, but if, if, even if they have a rotten Again, candidate, I'll I'm going ask to, you, no, they've changed that dynamics. Is that, that the mix. voice of majority or minority? It's what I have witnessed and experienced. Mm. And I'm telling you, this is what I've experienced and witnessed mm. from a lot of people. Take Kono, for example. We have seen uh, candidates that have been nominated for parliamentary positions. They have started re uh, rejecting their nomination. They said, I'm not contesting anymore because of A, B, C, D. People are now aware. And don't forget, the world is now becoming a, a, a small village because of social media. For example, one of the candidates in Kono, in Kamara, Chiefdom, where the former first lady is coming from, that's her Chiefdom, a parliamentary candidate has rejected he has already been nominated. He said, I'm leaving the APC because this presidential candidate abused us in Kono. <laughs> you know what that means? He was going to be elected as a member of parliament. But he said, no, I'm not looking at my party anymore. I'm going to fight for my people in Kono. Stay with so us. So the uh, dynamics is that, changing, my There dear. are different dynamics to that. Stay with us. <laughs> Let, anyway, let's, let's hear from you quickly. Um, so what are the strongest or things you would want to refer to as imperative um, recommendations that all of these political parties must run with as they prepare to launch uh, their manifestos? Yeah, um, Samuel, it is um, crystal clear that we have made um, recommendations and uh, political parties also have what they have in mind for their own manifestos. Mm -hmm. It is two um, different things, but um, to say we want to say the political parties, let them focus on the women's manifesto, most especially the um, social and economic empowerment of women. Mm -hmm. It is very key, it is very important for women to be self-reliant, and as well, the full implementation of the GWE Act. 
Mm. We want to see that. Because if that is done, I am sure the women will have the peace of mind or they will really get what President Bill have given to them. But if the, the fulfillment of the Women's Manifesto, or sorry, the Women's Act, is not into that manifesto or into implementation, I think it is a failed manifesto to political um, parties. Are we taking into consideration, have we set the parameters? Are the mechanics available for the full implementation of the Jewish um, um, Act? Taking into consideration, it's a new law. We've, we have to take into consideration the infrastructure, both physical and otherwise, to really get it into of, well, this now it, 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 to the June pools? I, I say it again, Samuel, and I'll keep on saying it, that the political parties, they have the power to do so. How? Mm. By bringing these women into those strategic positions. Right. As what Fibian was saying, mm. it is very difficult. And that is some of the problems I have with political parties. Forget about female president. There are other positions that really make decisions in political parties. One of them is the secretary general. These two major political parties, they have never, for me, I don't know, mm. but I've gone through the history, through the books of them, they have never given a woman to be a, a secretary general. Have they ever thought of making a woman the publicity for that party? I think these are positions that have seen. Yet yeah, the presidential candidate for women is one. But those positions as well can make a say. Mm. So let them go back to the drawing board. Let them go back to their political corner, sit back and say, okay, we have given them this opportunity. Have you engaged them already, the political parties? Well, I think we are going to engage them this Friday. Okay, all of and them? Yes, all of them. We are going to engage them this Friday. And after engaging them, I keep on saying it, we have the advocacy tool. We will continue to rally around them to see that what they have done into their manifesto with the inclusion of the women's manifesto comes to reality. Mrs. Kaba is saying it, Fibian was saying it, the voice of the majority can only be heard if women are inclusive. Mm. Samuel, women are very much vulnerable. If political fights erupt here, you mm. see women running away. But political parties have to give them those, that, that space to say, okay, I will not run, I will stand, I will leave. But these same men in those political parties that want the women to dance for them, that want the women to organize meetings for them, are the same men chase, that, are, that are chasing them out. That are Let me quickly ask them. both of you this question just before we move over to our Studio 2 for top stories in the news. Quickly, going back to 2018, I know for a fact President Bill approach, approached some women, appointed them, they declined. Are women, competent women, ready to act? I mean, if you do not belong to that political party, that you are, are you willing to go and serve? Are they willing? Sorry, let me ask that question. Are they willing? Quickly. Yeah, most of them are willing to serve. Mm. But um, what has been the problem for me, what I've identified, yeah. is that the political grassroots um, politics they play, we are in the mindset of most of them is saying, if I am an APC, for example, mm -hmm. a woman, an APC, everybody knows that I've been a strong yeah. uh, APC member. If I want to serve in this present government now, it's like I have betrayed your party. APC. That is the, the, the bad mindset. Let's take an example of Alpha Khan. The, 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 the stone throws on him. Hmm. The West throws on him, okay. saying he's a betrayer. He's this and that. Even though he has already, or he has come as partner to the public, that he has declared for his But I'm sure, mm -hmm. um, Samuel, going back to you, that the mindset should be clear. The mindset should be renewed. Okay. That even if I am SLPP or I am APC, if the ruling government calls me to serve, as a woman in a very static position, I should go there and serve. You should make and yourself available. Yes, and All right, so quickly, Mrs. Kaba. Samuel, for me, that's not an excuse. Mm. If I ask Fabian to serve and she declined, I'll reach out to other women. That's why I said we are 52% of the population and we have more competent women. Right. So for me, I think the women are ready to serve. Okay. We are ready. All right. More so than ready. Continue Thank to stay with us. <laughs> <laughs> it's nine o'clock. We're heading now to Studio Two and join David Remy Wilson for top stories from the news. Back to you, David. Yes. Good morning to you, Phoebe and uh, Samuel. In our top stories this morning, the country's vice president, Dr. Mohamed Julda Jallo, has um, noted that government is taking steps to repeal the 1902 Lunacy Act to address cross-cultural approach and met international best practices to address mental health issues. 
He made his commitment during the launch of the Presidential Task Force on Mental Health Continental Learning Session that focuses on development mental health legislation in Africa. Today, the 1902 Donancy Act has not changed over the years. However, as a government, we have taken steps to repeal and replace the 1902 Donancy Act with modern mental health legislation, with a modern mental health legislation that is clear to oriented and social culturally appropriate and one that meets or even exceeds international best practices. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as a government, we remain committed to guaranteeing the rights of every one of our citizens. Another story, the European Union Ambassador to Sierra Leone, Man Mula, has reaffirmed the European Union's commitment to long-term partnership between Sierra Leone and the European Union while supporting initiatives leading to a better business and investment climate that will enhance a broad-based and inclusive economic growth and development. The Ambassador made this comment during the celebration of the European Day celebration at the Bintumani. That is in Blue Conference all in Freetown. The European Union looks forward to continuing this fruitful dialogue with Sierra Leone, which also includes matters on the agenda of the United Nations Security Council. Distinguished guests, in 2021, following close coordination with all relevant stakeholders, the European Union adopted a bilateral cooperation program of 245 million euros for the period 2021 to 2024. The partnership and cooperation between the EU and Sierra Leone for this period focuses on three priority areas, all closely interrelated. Firstly, the European Union supports Sierra Leone's green economy. By that I mean fostering the creation of decent jobs as well as green economic transformation, increasing access to sustainable energy for jobs and growth, development of employment-oriented sustainable agriculture food system. And finally, police in Kenema are investigating one Fuad CC for lawful position of some fake 20 leons in the tune of 49,000 leons. Fuad was arrested by officers attached to the Wanjama police post in the outskirts of Kenema City. The police at Wanjama checkpoint intercepted uh, a middle-aged forward CCA and uh, upon search at the checkpoint he was found in possession of 49,000 uh, New Leon's currency and uh, when you look at it closely you can realize that uh, it has some elements of counterfeit. So the said amount was conveyed to the regional headquarters here and together with the suspect. And the preliminary investigation has already begun. And uh, we are trying to see how it all happened. People need to be very, very careful, more so those business women who do their businesses in the night. They have to confirm the authenticity of uh, RNC before they can transact. Because in as much as we have started arresting this, it could be, uh, it could be that uh, such has circulated among or within the community. Well, that's all we have in our top stories this morning. Back to you, Samuel and Phoebe in our main studios. All right, thank you very much, um, David. Um, let's run through some messages quickly and um, so that we can wrap up the segment. Asan. Osam Conte is saying the, program, the problem with women in Sierra Leone is they hardly support each other. <laughs> Otherwise, Sierra Leone should have a female president a long time ago. Um, Samuel, please yes. continue. All right. Um, Molish Kanu is saying the political parties make manifestos, but they do not work according to their manifestos. Osam Conte says the problem with women in Sierra Leone is they hardly support each other. Otherwise, Sierra Leone should have had a female president long ago. Stephen Yale is saying, this woman has made my day. We have great women in my beautiful country. That's a new day for, um, this is a new day for our women. 
Sunday will continue. Um, I doubt in the saying the poor quality of okay, we're not discussing the ID card. Mm -hmm. uh, Momo Vande is saying the reality is that the historical um, parental injustices by um, almost always giving preference in educating their male children is now haunting our nation. The educated women in Mama Salon are few. So this 30% mm -hmm. allocation will benefit the very few that we are fortunate enough to acquire education. Give Mama Salon a little time and our mothers and sisters will be key decision makers in our nation. The case of Auntie Femi is a different ball game. She is a woman with many colors and cannot be easily um, trusted with power. She can easily, okay, I'm not going to continue that. I'll leave it there. Mos D says the obstacles for women to reach the highest in our political environment in Sierra Leone has to be addressed from the grassroots. I must say Sierra Leone is not unique in these challenges. It is a global phenomenon as many factors still working against women. If we are to achieve this long-awaited and deserving goal, the culture has to change in many areas such as religion, tradition, cultural settings. Um, Valtin again is saying the people, uh, political, lead, uh, our political parties and leadership have put confidence in to run our country for the past 62 years have failed us badly. Make, uh, and that is so sad, so let's make a change. Abdullah B. Lukule says women are our priority. Francis Sandy is commenting, Madam Kaba saying she is very much, she's very much matured in a statement. Such a great um, person deserves a cabinet position. That's a campaign started for you already. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think those would be all the messages from my end. All right, just quickly, Casey says saying this woman is talking for the women of Sierra Leone. Um, that is, and she's not only talking about SLPP. This is the kind of woman we need. Arnold Ladiaka by saying you are. Um, okay, thank you for calling our attention to our uh, station on um, SATCON. We'll take that into consideration. Okay, well, the last one here is Casey. Say he says this woman is talking for um, women of Sierra Leone, only talking about SLPP. Um, Samuel, our country always votes on regional or tribal lines. Women will need to work very hard to break that trend. Dauda Tawali mm -hmm. is saying, uh, my Jacoba, is she not? Um, yes, she's the same, my Jacoba. Uh, they saying the obstacles for women to reach the IS in our political environment in Sierra Leone has to be addressed from the grassroots. I must say Sierra Leone is not unique in these challenges. It is a global phenomenon as many factors are still working against women. If we are to achieve this long awaited and deserving goal, the culture has to change in many areas such as religion, tradition, mm -hmm. cultural settings. That's for Mosdi. And the final message I will take is um, from Prince Mohammed Jabi Jab saying, we love you, Mama. This time around, let us give chance to our mothers to lead us. Um, let's quickly allow both of you to respond to some of the comments as we wrap up the conversation. Um, ja um, and we'll start off with you. Yeah, um, beautiful uh, messages. And uh, I want to respond to the uh, one saying the women are not ready to support each other. That I can say, yes, it is. Um, it has some um, factual issues because going around um, the country during um, political um, participation, you see women going against um, women. I was um, in a part of the provinces during mm. um, the nomination. You've seen uh, a fellow woman contesting with another woman, throwing some obscene um, That's politics. Yes, and, um, languages against the other. And um, the very worst part is that. Um, if that woman is contesting against a man, you see other women, of course, pulling down the, 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 the legs of that um, particular uh, woman rather than supporting the woman in any form, either economically, either um, physically, in a campaign way for her to win against that um, particular man. But you will rather see that most of the, the, the women at that time will start pulling legs. You you surprised. I have, I have seen it. I've had it. Another woman will, was telling a fellow woman that uh, you, 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 we are coming, or, 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 or men, we are coming with you. It, it, to it my does house. happen between and yes. amongst men too. Yes, men. It's politics. Yeah, but, but, but the worst part, mm. Samuel, is that when it happens against a woman and a man, that is my point. Mm. Wherein okay. a woman is 
contesting mm -hmm. against a man. A man. Mm. If it's a woman contesting against a woman, a woman, it is understandable that women, to some extent, or most times, are mouthy. Right. But if a woman... You have to be careful. Yes, if a woman standing <laughs> against a man, then I'm sure the fellow women should really be behind but that But even woman. with men, women contesting against men, you still have some men who prefer to support that woman right. over the man. And some of them take it to such heights that they even also rain abusive mm -hmm. words on the man. Yes, that, that comes to some of the if or she. We are at parliament, we champion the GB bill, campaign for good governance. In fact, some of us, we are tied with um, LAPA, saying, yes, you mm. are really um, champion. I am glad those men who support women for political parties. For me, Fibian, trust me, if a woman throughout parliament, throughout cabinet, rule this country, I do tell people in privileged conversations, colleagues out there, senior colleagues as well, saying, let's give these women the chances. Okay. I trust you, Fibian, if we do, see alone, we'll get a As we, we wrap up, um, 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 IJ, as, so for the elected positions, they're different from the appointed positions. Focusing on the elected positions, are you in any way, uh, uh, when I say you, I mean a woman in any way, uh, trying to take out the, the politicking side of politics and trying to give women an easy way or shortcut into politics? Well, in this process, I don't think there's a shortcut, the PR system. Because if there was a shortcut, they would have accepted the first bill that we, we, we presented which was to create safe seats for women in parliament. Mm. You understand? Which they didn't have to go through all the hassle and bustle of campaigning, blah, 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 so that every district would just nominate one woman. Mm. So straight away, we would have, would have, have had five, 16 women in parliament. But the men rejected that. So that's why for me, the parliament, I'm not proud of them all. Because they rejected that. Even the he for she men, they, some of the, they all rejected that, that particular aspect of the bill. You understand the what seats I'm were about? at stake. Well, so that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so that would have been a shortcut to create 16 space for women in parliament across political, well, non-political party lines, but, you know, per district. Mm -hmm. So that would have been the short. But this process, no. They are all going through the same process as the men. And going back to the issue of saying women don't support the men, we are not living in a homogeneous society, uh, Phoebe. You don't expect everybody, as, even as we sit here, four of us, or you add the three men, it's seven. We all don't think the same way. Everybody has his or her own perception to life. Yeah, and say even if, if you contest, all the women support you in one constituency, mm -hmm. that will not make you win. You need the support of both the men and women and the young and the, and the youth. Right. So for me, it depends on the candidates also. Mm -hmm. It depends on how you relate with your people. It depends on what, how you, you work within your party. You understand? And we, we are castigating the political parties also that they don't create the spaces for us. Mm -hmm. Women are afraid to even vie for position for Secretary General. Well, I've not seen, it's difficult for you to see women coming up for that position. It is not like us. Is we, it the responsibility of the political party to put the ambition in the women to vie for those positions? Nobody puts ambition into you. Phoebe, and you don't give what you don't have. Nobody, you don't get power on this sil uh, silver platter. You have to go for it and fight for it. You have to work hard for it. If you say, you know, because let me tell you what most women are afraid of. As soon as you vie for position, they start calling you names. They start abusing you. They start giving you all sorts of derogatory remarks. So if you are afraid to face that happens that with battle, the men too. But no, they're but, always no, no, no. coming forward for position. No, no. But let me tell yeah, yeah, you, by virtue of our nature, you can call Samuel here, Rari boy. Mm -hmm. We'll just take it as an accolade. Right. If you call me Rari girl, I will feel bitter. Mm -hmm. That's by virtue of our nature. Naturally, it is like that. Somewhere we are an ordinary boxer now and a vest and walk on the streets of Frieza. Then we say, This boy is sexy, but as a woman, they say, Don't crazy. People start calling, you know what I mean? So it is not me or you, it is how God created us. Yeah? And that is what we are resisting now. No amount of mami calls, no amount of uh, woman calls, or yeah. everything that you do to bring me down will deter my progress. No, we are determined. <laughs> In fact, that's what we are going to call on now. We're going to stage a protest. Because this mami cause has now become a weapon. As soon as you raise your head, they start abusing your mother, calling us. Sort of, for us, we have a, a bulletproof for that. I don't care if you call me all sorts of names. My conscience is clear that IJ is not like that. But not all women. So that is one of the reasons that is causing us not to have women at the helm of things.
in the various political parties. Thank you very much, uh, my Jacob and Henry, for joining us this morning. Uh, I know this conversation would continue, especially mm -hmm. about the manifesto and the activities of women's involvement in politics as the time draws closer to mm -hmm. the June 24 uh, decision-making of Sierra Leone. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we would go on a quick break, and we would come back to continue the second and final segment of the program this morning. Stay with us. Every day, the world wakes up to you. Millions of people are getting ready for you for shopping travel expenses utility bills trade and commerce if we all have wishes then what is your financial transaction wish i'd like to have a choice i'd like convenience i'd like to pay for goods and services on the go i'd like to pay utility bills on the go out of credit and data buy some of my top up still on my phone oops light out i'll buy some etsa still on my phone. I like to make payment from my account to another account through my mobile phone. As a share of a company, I would like my staff to receive their salaries to bulk e-payment without the risk of transporting cash. Raquel Commercial Bank Simcopo does it all. Raquel Commercial Bank Simcopo. Think of it as money when you're close to home and when you're away from home for unexpected expenses and money for those times when cash fails. If you can dream it, you can become it. If you can imagine it, you can achieve it. Brokaw Commercial Bank Sim Copper is all you need. We are now days away from Sierra Leone's dates with destiny the June 24th general election. In this defining moment in the history of Sierra Leone, here at AYV, we recognize the man who trust upon us to be the voice of the nation fully. We take our task to ensure fair coverage seriously. We intend to honor our pledge to you, to be your home of all things credible, factual, and all times balanced news. Totally, this is our commitment to you. We have witnessed non-stop hours of groundbreaking broadcast in an effort that saw AYV rolled out eight studios across Sierra Leone at Star Hill, Aberdeen, McKinney, Kenema, Bow and London. With almost three kilometers of coaxial cable laid, connecting four ground teams that consume almost 100 liters of coffee from Chef Taina. The most important number is two. Out of dozens of aspirants, only two men had emerged from the conventions in February as flag bearers of the APC and SLPP, retired Brigadier Julius Madabio and Dr. Samura Matthew Wilson Tamara. So far, we have witnessed a lot of intrigues. Maybe this is the beginning. Defections and realignments have been plenty. We don't know if there's more to come. The only thing you can guarantee right now is that your home of credible, factual, and balanced news and analysis, AYV Media Empire, will bring you every twist and turn of this amazing race in full color and in high definition. We shall have a comprehensive look at the developments around the election as we count down to Sierra Leone State with destiny. Women clamored and got a law that provides 30% minimum quota in governance. Will that be achieved this June? Well, one thing is clear. The nation has begun its conversation that will culminate a date with its destiny on the 24th of June. How much will change by then? And what shifts within the political landscape are we going to see? Find out more on the nation's biggest and most trusted news source, AYV on Channel 33, on DSTV Channel 399, on Radio 11.7 FM, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and of course, on TikTok. Yes, indeed, only AYV, because AYV, nine salo sabi. Welcome back. This is Wake Up Sierra Leone on AYV television and radio. And we still encourage you to continue being a part of the conversation. Join us on Facebook, AYV News. Drop a comment or question and we'll try to add them to the conversation. Now, in this segment, uh, recently Parliament of Sierra Leone approved amendments to the Bank of Sierra Leone Act 2019, referred to as the 
Bank of Sierra Leone Amendment Act 2023, authorizing use of other currencies in Sierra Leone for transaction purposes under certain conditions. Now, these conditions are to be prescribed by the Bank of Sierra Leone. The Bank of Sierra Leone has issued guidelines that provide for the conditions under which other currencies can be used for transactional purposes in Sierra Leone. So what are the amendments that Parliament approved? And what are the guidelines issued by the bank to give effect to the same? This morning to discuss this issue, we have um, Thomas Boima, Deputy Director of Financial Market Department, Bank of Sierra Leone. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, uh, talking about um, authorizing other uh, currencies to be used in Sierra Leone, uh, let's get that clear. When we say other currencies, is that like a whole basket or there are limitations? Well, uh, there, 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 there is no limitation because when we say other currencies, we are talking about international currencies. Uh, but of course, uh, we, uh, we know that uh, the major currencies are the pounds, the US dollars, the Japanese yen, and so on. But uh, there's no limit to the currency uh, to be traded in. Uh, this decision, I, I'm so, I'm tempted to ask you, uh, why, why that decision? I, I remember that um, during the days of um, President Koma, we received text messages uh, prohibiting the use of such currencies for transactions in Sierra Leone. And even during President um, Bio's initial uh, time in office, that was still maintained, prohibiting the use of such currencies in Sierra Leone. How then have we come to that point now where we're saying we could use them for transactional purposes in Sierra Leone? Uh, well, uh, there are transactions by their nature that are supposed to be really done in foreign currencies. Uh, for example, there are some payments that by virtue of the, the, uh, the nature of those transactions that must be done in foreign currency. Uh, contracts that are denominated in foreign currency that have been approved by parliament should be done in foreign currency. Uh, there are some payments that should be done in foreign currency by uh, the fact that uh, we being signatories to uh, uh, agreement and uh, uh, some protocols that we should allow them to be done in foreign currency. And of course, uh, there are some projects that are denominated in foreign currency and for which funding are coming from abroad that we can allow to be done in foreign currency. And so on that basis, uh, the bank uh, held some uh, extensive uh, consultations with uh, key stakeholders and came to realize that it is necessary that uh, that section, which is uh, section 26 of the BSL Act 2019, to be amended to allow businesses uh, of such nature to be done in foreign currency. This, this, uh, this amendment now, you know, when you, for the ordinary citizens, you hear this, you get the temptation to say, I could also start selling a cup of pepper in dollars. What are the limitations? What are the guidelines for these transactions in foreign currency? Well, the guidelines uh, is very clear on that. It's not every business that has to be done in foreign currency. Uh, for example, like I said, uh, we have contracts that are denominated in foreign currency which have been approved by parliament. That can be done in foreign currency. Uh, we have uh, projects that are donor funded and for which uh, may require maybe payment for services in foreign currency. Maybe you may need to hire uh, expertise from abroad and so that can be done in foreign currency but then of course uh, there are uh, some businesses that the guideline has specified like uh, duty-free shops hotels and restaurants 
located at the International Airport. Of course, we know uh, uh, visitors coming in may definitely wish to trade in foreign currencies. You will not want to expose them to exchange risk because they don't know the exchange rate and so therefore you could allow them to uh, for the that. basics the the local in country transaction uh, we already have uh, landlords who demand usd for rent people buy and sell vehicles they demand usd for such transactions uh, with the amendment what does it say to such transactions in country going to the supermarket buying in usd going to the mall buying in usd what does the amendment say based on the guidelines where does it leave such transactions have they become legal now or the the, the guidelines very clear on the specific uh, businesses uh, payment of rent to landlords is not allowed under these uh, guidelines the guidelines specified businesses like i said we are talking about hotels we are talking about duty-free shops we are talking about uh, restaurants resident at the uh, lunge international so for the airport. restaurants and hotels so, that are not at the lunge international airport are they prohibited from doing transactions in foreign currencies well uh, looking at the guidelines the guideline is uh, silent on that which to me uh, is not part of the uh, the beneficiaries so it covers only those mm. at the airport yes for now but ju just out of curiosity but again it did not say those outside the airport should not transact you're saying it's silence on it so there is clear no proof. it's it's very clear mm. that's what i said the guidelines identified the areas like i said due to free shops hotels and restaurants at the Lunge International Airport. So it's specific. W would that not be a little bit um, bring about confusion? So at the Lunge, for example, there is the, um, the airport hotel. And so if foreigners are, are coming in with, ad current, with foreign currencies, be it pounds, euro, Japanese yen, RNB, or, or, or dollar, and they just travel to to one of the hotels along the beach roads with their foreign currencies, are they not permitted to, to, to do business with those foreign currencies? Well, like I said, we, we are here to discuss right. what is contained in, in the, the guidelines. guidelines. Yeah, and, and the, the guidelines is specific. And, and the purpose also, yeah, of the Mr. conversation as well is also to educate the public because, again, this is new and it's confusing. You also don't want a situation where people find themselves flouting out of ignorance. So again, we need to establish the areas where it's covered, the areas where it's excluded. So yes, that needs to factor into the conversation. Well, uh, all I can say here is that uh, if you are uh, a hotel operator At outside Lungi. outside of uh, Lungi, and you think uh, you want to benefit from this one, I would advise that maybe you, you contact the bank by way of maybe request for exceptional approval. Maybe the bank will look at uh, your operations and then maybe if uh, there is wisdom in that, then the, it can be approved. Will this not add to the pressure of the demand for the USD and the pounds, particularly in the country, which again comes back to affect uh, Inflation rate on the goods of commodities, on the prices of commodities, I beg your pardon. No, madam. In fact, it's the other way around. This guideline is meant actually to reduce the pressure you are talking about. Uh, mind you, there are uh, contracts that uh, are denominated in uh, foreign currency, but payments uh, we are done in local currency. And so the, the resources were then used to fetch for uh, foreign currency in the, local, uh, in, in the private market, which was in itself putting pressure on the, the, the rate. So in effect, uh, this uh, amendment is meant to reduce the pressure that we are currently uh, facing in the 
foreign exchange market. What, what are we not getting right? As we try to wrap up, what are we not getting right um, in terms of monetary policies? So Fibian mentioned um, the decree then under the APC regime for the non-transaction US or foreign currencies in Sierra Leone. Coming back, there have been different policies from the current um, bank governor. Um, I mean, giving cap with withdrawals of foreign currencies and all of that. And now with this amendment, what are we not getting right? Uh, well, uh, you know, the bank would want to take actions based on informed judgment. Mm. Of course, like you said, uh, there, there was a time that this uh, uh, trading in foreign currency was uh, prohibited. Right. And that was based on the, 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 the law. Mm -hmm. Now the bank has, uh, uh, based on its uh, 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 discussions with uh, relevant stakeholders, have seen reasons to allow uh, the use of foreign currencies in certain transactions. So uh, basically, we are like uh, looking at the uh, situation, conditions prevailing in the market and the uh, recent development in order that uh, our laws reflect current market development. So Phoebe talked about um, inflation rates, now the, foreign, the, the exchange rate is also a crisis. What will be the impact? Because already we have, I mean, uh, we're, we're seeing the depreciation of our Leon every now and then to, to a point that we now have a projection of it um, being 2.6 million in June um, for, for $100, I mean, that in the old Leon. So what would be the impact of this initiative, whether it's going to cushion or worsen the situation? Well, uh, it's, it's actually meant to uh, <coughs> reduce the, the inflationary pressure we are seeing mm. currently. Because as we are aware, uh, the role of exchange rate depreciation has been significant in pushing up prices. Mm. And uh, by allowing uh, uh, businesses, certain businesses, mm -hmm. to now trade in foreign currency, we will begin to see uh, the pressure from the foreign exchange angle uh, moving downwards, and that will likely help to uh, stabilize prices. Mm. So what are your final thoughts on this? Uh, uh, how would you ensure that the public is well informed about these guidelines and the, type of, the types of businesses that are approved to go on um, using ad currencies? Uh, then uh, <coughs> also, although the, the, the bank has uh, granted uh, or granted permission to certain uh, businesses to uh, transact in foreign currencies, there are requirements mm. that uh, these businesses will need to uh, conform with. Uh, one is that uh, if you are not uh, a licensed uh, dealer, foreign mm. exchange dealer, the resources that you obtain from these transactions, you must either deposit it in your, into your uh, foreign currency account or you can sell it to authorized dealers, that is banks or uh, foreign exchange bureaus or you can use them to uh, make payments, international payment, to uh, a licensed uh, commercial bank. We, are, are these clear red flags that um, our, our, our beloved, our adored Leon, I mean, is at the point of it being extinct? Are these red flags? Are we, should we be worried as a country? No, we should not be worried. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the, the permission is uh, specific uh, to transactions because uh, by their nature, for example, if uh, a project is funded from uh, abroad, of course we expect uh, uh, foreign currency mm -hmm. to fly in and therefore and uh, if you have to hire 
uh, services from abroad, mm -hmm. definitely you will need to pay for that services in foreign currency. And so it is not like uh, it's any uh, red flag on uh, our currency. Our currency remains a uh, legal tender and uh, for uh, transactions that does not qualify under the guidelines are still to be done in domestic currency. Deliver. Out of curiosity, let's, let's uh, get a clarification on this. Um, uh, do the guidelines speak to salaries of public servants and even people within the private sector to be paid in USD? Not at all. It does not cover uh, salary payments. We are talking about receipts and payments for goods and services of selected businesses, like we said, hotels, restaurants, and uh, duty-free shops. All right, not even experts. Expatriate being brought into the country are covered in this. Well, uh, for expatriates, mm. of course, even uh, based on the 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 the, the old law, they were paid in uh, foreign, foreign currencies. currencies. Okay, yes. so the law did not uh, prohibit that at all. All right. Well, thank you very much. And lastly, how can um, the general population get access to the guidelines? Uh, well, uh, <coughs> of course, uh, the guidelines uh, have been uh, gazetted, published, uh, but you could also get uh, the guidelines from our uh, website, the Bank of Sierra Leone website, and uh, we have also published uh, the guidelines uh, in newspapers. So if you uh, contact uh, the newspapers, you can get all of that. Would you care to kindly share the um, web address for the Bank of Sierra Leone, please? Well, uh, it's uh, it's uh, www.info.bsl.gov.sl. Thank you very much, um, Fomos Boima. It's been a pleasure having you here this morning. And um, we we'll look forward to more engagement on policies and reforms at the bank. Thank you. Every day, the and world I'm wakes up. All right, let's quickly go for commercial break, and when we come back, we shall be speaking to um, DJ based on his return and um, his show, The Night's Life. Every day, the world wakes up to you. Millions of people are getting ready for you for shopping, travel expenses, utility bills, trade, and commerce. If we all have wishes, then what is your financial transaction wish? I'd like to have a choice. I'd like convenience. I'd like to pay for goods and services on the go. I'd like to pay utility bills on the go. Out of credit and data, buy some of my top up, still on my phone. Oops, light out. I'll buy some Etsa, still on my phone. I'd like to make payment from my account to another account through my mobile phone. As a share of a company, I'd like my staff to receive their salaries to bulk e-payment without the risk of transporting cash. Raquel Commercial Bank Simcopo does it all. Raquel Commercial Bank Simcopo. Think of it as money when you're close to home and when you're away from home for unexpected expenses and money for those times when cash fails. If you can dream it, you can become it. If you can imagine it, you can achieve it. Rokel Commercial Bank Sim Copper is all you need. AYV International, a truly global media outlet, our media platforms can be found across the world, including Africa, America, Asia, Europe, Caribbean, the Pacific and more. Our media services include broadcasting, media production of documentaries, movies and a wide range of audiovisual services, advertising and public relations, sporting and events coverage, photography and a reliable media equipment rental unit, as well as media training. Contact us at our International AYV Media Centre, 18 Soho Square, London, United Kingdom, W1D 3QH. 
Telephone us on 074-967-4563. Or you can send us an email to ayv.international at ayvnews.com or ayv.international at gmail.com. You can also find us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All right, welcome back. The show is Wake Up Soil in here on AYV Television on Channel 43 on DSTV, Channel 399 on Radio FM 11.7 and on our AYV News Facebook page. In the studio, we've been joined by one of Sierra Leone's renowned journalists, Mama Jajalo, fondly known as DJ Bays. And he's here to talk about his um, homecoming, I should put it. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Thank Bays. you. Right. And um, I mean, you, 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 were, you were away from Sierra Leone. Yeah. Uh, you were in the UK, but you were not away from the media because exactly. you were still doing what you do best. And uh, so, so, so Sierra Leoneans will be eager to know, DJ Bass, what have you brought back? The same DJ Bass is back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. Why Thanks. are you back? Uh, because of you guys. So mm -hmm. I'm back. But anyway, to God be the glory. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to say big thanks to all my fans. I know they we'll be watching and listening. I'm back and uh, I came like, what should I say? Uh, I just slide kind of my enough for that. <laughs> so I've been around for a few days now trying to put myself together and uh, I was away for about six months. Today max six months since I left civilian so I'm back mm -hmm. and uh, of course I was working with uh, Mercury, so when I went to the UK, well, just to keep myself busy because I was doing my uh, Facebook page stuff, which right. I have, uh, in fact, I've got up to 30,000 people on mm -hmm. my page. So, well, again, I met with my brother, Mr. Leon, and uh, we spoke. But before going to the UK, I mean, we, uh, there were talks behind the line to see how best I can maybe come and fill that gap because. When I left, people mm -hmm. told me, and, I mean, we miss you, we're not able to listen to you. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Mercury, I mean, just to keep myself busy, and of course, Mercury, they're not dealing with maybe politics and other issues, so it was just music. Mm. But later on, I bring my vibes in, then, okay, cut long talk short. Mm. When I went to the UK, I decided to walk with, back with AYV, at least the international level, while I was mm -hmm. there, instead of maybe keeping my time. So I resigned at uh, Mercury, so I'm leaving, and that's the good thing in me. All places that I've worked, I resign. I mean, willingly, there's no problem. So we spoke with uh, a brother, the COO, and say, if I come back, man, I play. So mm -hmm. consults one or two of my close relatives, and then, so well, let me just get myself engaged whilst I'm in the UK, but I was hoping to come back, and I'm back. And uh, well, before coming, a lot of people were saying, I mean, can't vote, so can't vote, and the silly people, and, but <laughs> I, I tell them, and then, I mean, I said, why don't our lady Jabez can make that change there, you know? Mm. It's, you know, in this election, can I create awareness? And so it's a blessing, I'm back, and uh, I think I'll continue to do what people know me for. Mm. I think that's for it. And now that you're back, uh, your fans would be expecting, uh, you know, to hear you back on the radio as on soon as as soon as they can so when are you starting well hopefully i'll start on oh, the... when are you resuming would be the better word yes because i've already started so i mean friday god's willing things worked out i'll start the tv and radio show i'll be doing it three times a week monday wednesday and friday then let's say from 10 o'clock to 12 the usual time i mean it could be on radio at the same time on tv and other social media platforms but I mean, tomorrow I want to come at night on the radio, let's say from 10 to 12 or 1 or 2, as the case may be in, so mm. people can feel me and know I'm around, you know? Mm. So the program resumes this Friday? Yes, what? on TV and radio, but on radio, hopefully tomorrow. What should your fans expect from the Jesse DJBs? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not the Jesse, I'm the same like any other person, so, I mean, they will expect more. I mean, they know me for creating awareness. Mm -hmm. And uh, elections are just around the corner. 
I mean, a lot of people know when it comes to elections, DJ Biz is one of the people that sets the pace, give people voice and all this kind of stuff, and then discuss the issue. Because to me, I mean, we are going to the polls very soon. Mm -hmm. And some of us need to create that awareness so that people can know that they have a, the power. You know, every man has one vote. So, so, so let's talk about the vibe. You know, you mentioned earlier about the, the gap. Mm -hmm. And um, your, your voice has been one of the trusted voices in this country, young people, policymakers that listen to DJ Bass. Yeah. And um, now it's, it's a very critical period, very sensitive, um, days to the polls. What, what, what vibe and um, what's the, the, the level of trust would you co want to continue to build in Sierra Leoneans as we head to the elections? Well, so I mean, like I said, to me the vibes is the same, mm. you know. I mean, young people should be aware, they shouldn't get into violence, and then they shouldn't be used like we know politicians use young people. So mm -hmm. just, I mean, let's young people take up their own responsibility because to me, the problem in Sierra Leone is all about young people. And when you look on the other side of it, the kush, it's yeah. killing our young people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's how to talk to young people. I know they listen to me. Mm -hmm. Talk to young people and, I mean, talk to people when it comes to elections, it's just for some days. And then we we'll leave again. To me, I, sometimes I say there's unity and diversity. You can be whatever color, mm. but when it comes to Sierra Leone, we should be able to, I mean, think alike. Mm. So, so, so what's, what's message of assurance and um, calling would you want to give to your fans, those who listen to DJ Bass, those who do not go to bed until <laughs> DJ Bass is off air? Good. <laughs> I see my colleagues are laughing anyway. <laughs> well. The same, they will film me tomorrow, like I said, I'll come on the radio, then we take it from there. But I know even before now, I've been, we've been broadcasting from the UK, I believe. Right. A lot of people have been watching my shows because, I mean, uh, some people think, I mean, maybe it's not the kind of DJ biz they know, but again. And so what was the experience like, uh, you know, doing the show from AYV International? Well, it's a blessing, and when you talk about international, it's worldwide so that's another step for me in broadcasting and to broadcast in the UK I mean well equipped studio I mean and again I think I started it when I went there to I mean do a live program and create the awareness that's AYV International is out there and I'm sure we'll still keep that spirit to see our best we can still feel it from here now I'm gonna put you on the spot yeah AYV Sierra Leone AYV International mm. who has you <laughs> Okay, good. Oh, right. Just right. so uh, <laughs> you deal with COO later that you've chosen the AYV serial, you know, over AYV International. DJ Base, listen to this. Go we'll tell DJ, um, Jesse, DJ Base, Babylon, or the lie. The man don't put on weight too. Don't fresh. <laughs> no, you can. Well, again, you see, uh, the other thing, again, I, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people know me for is maybe bringing some of the realities in other part of the world. Like somebody said, you know, when people see me, ah, you don't put on it because there's food, there's clean water, the environment is, I mean, it's clean. So you must be healthy. So one of the things I always do when I travel in different parts of the world, in fact, this is my thoughts, I'm going to the UK, I mean, is to bring back some of the vibes that we can do it. To me, Sierra Leone is untouched when you see other developments in other parts of the world. The kind of skyscrapers, the technology, to me, Sierra Leone is untouched. And we have all what it takes. Mm. You can see sanity, you can see cleanliness. I mean, when you talk about, you always have something in your phone. In other words, you have Wi-Fi everywhere you go. Even when things are hard, people still, the basic. Mm -hmm. So you see, and to me it was like a rest and I give God the glory because, I mean, it's nice and it's a nice experience. Sometimes I bring some of these things back so people can know that, I mean, Anyway, it's, it's, sometimes, you <laughs> sounds know, as if you're giving up. Well, sometimes, I mean, because, you know, the problem about me is when most of these are people in authority, mm -hmm. I mean, who are coming for part, for example, like the elections. Yeah. These people have been in other part of the world and see how it all works. So when some of, go, some of us go there and see it's not being replicated back home, it's, I mean, in your own little corner, discipline, mm -hmm. sanity, law and order, and you begin to think there's something wrong with some of these guys, you know? On a positive note, you've been away for six months and you're back. Uh, what are the things you've seen in Sierra Leone that, you know, just sort of, you know, made you feel 
happy about being a Sierra Leonean? Well, again, in Sierra Leone, I mean, I, 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 I feel good when people laugh. I feel good when I listen to people. I feel good when I give voice to people. So what I'm saying is, I mean, in, in that part of the world, for example, the whole of the week I'm in, how, in the house, you can't go nowhere. So to so me, to some extent, it's a prison, but civilized because everything is there. <laughs> you know, you have your microwave, you have food and everything. So, but again, there are certain things you'll miss. The neighborhood, mm. in that part of the world, I mean, mm. everybody's in his own settings. Nobody goes to the other person, whatever. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Sierra Leone, you can move from one neighborhood, you go big pepper or salt on the next side. Mm. You can't do that in that part of the world. Everybody goes to buy he, what he or she wants. So you miss that one, you miss, miss the company. And to me, like I said earlier on, I feel good making people happy. I feel good giving voice to people, you know? When you make people laugh sometimes, it's stress-free. Mm. Or when you say something that some people say, yeah, and the guy it's in the man talk so. Conscious know? vibes. It's, exactly. It's yeah, an inspiration, so. Yeah. Well, from base to center, from center back to base. Yeah. <laughs> and the name of the show now is the Back to Base Show. Right. So oh, it's changed from nightlife to the Back yeah, to Base. Yeah, now it's the Back to Base Show. All right. So, well, we look forward to listening to you tomorrow. Thank on you. On radio. My and yes. all the three days. So, tomorrow week. it's just a session on the radio, right? Yes. Not yes. the show itself. Yes. yes. The yes. show is on Friday. No, the show starts tomorrow on radio only. Because next week, okay. if everything works out, I've got my own sets, then we'll start Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right. radio and TV. Or sometimes I'll come on the radio and because there I can feel. And do what DJ Bass does best. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, thank you, DJ Bass. And you are welcome back. Thank you. You'll deal with CO later. <laughs> you, you've chosen us over them. It's the same AYV family, though. Yeah. But hey, we're heading now to Studio <laughs> 2 to join Ransford McLean for the latest in sports. Good morning, Ransford. Very good morning, Fibian Swill. Good morning, Samuel. And uh, to uh, welcoming back our boss, uh, DJ Bass, and the Vez who've been following the show this morning. Uh, to our first story in sports, that to do with the Sierra Leone Premier League board in Apresa. Uh, the issue out yesterday has informed uh, Premier League clubs and the public that they have postponed uh, week 26 matches, which will have been on May the 20th and the 21st uh, for the weekend in the Sierra Leone Premier League. Media officer of the Sierra Leone Premier League board, Elton John, says uh, some clubs have agreed to play a three-day mini football competition for the official opening of the Southern Arena in Bowen. Let's have a look. Maybe you call that one of the big challenges of the Premier League board is location of facilities. As a board, we want to play a competitive league in a good atmosphere. But one of our big challenge is our Premier League club getting location at ground for themselves. It has been very challenging. The previous day we received a letter, a kindly letter from um, the management of the Sada Marera, owned by Babadi Kamara, who is the owner of that stadium, requesting the board to postpone matches on the 27th week, that should be this coming weekend, so that they will officially open the Sada Arena stadium. So what we did as a board, we contacted the clubs, we are working for the clubs, we got 95% an agreement unanimously that yes, we should support the body, his initiative is good, and what we should do is for us to reschedule our, our matches coming up this week, that is the plane on Wednesday, but the, the matches coming up on Saturday and Sunday has been rescheduled because we want to support the young man, he has done a great work. If you want to count the mini stadium or community fields, we are using 60% of our fields are mostly fields. They are not good for football, no. but we are managing the situation. So we want to compliment the effort of the young man by supporting him. And unanimously, the club that has been invited to take part in the TV Gala competition have given their consent. So we as a board, without no delay, we came out to the press release the other day that uh, we postpone these matches or we schedule these matches so that we support Babadi initiative of developing or constructing the first stadium owned by Sierra Leone. And luckily for Sierra Leone, this stadium has been approved by Cavan FIFA. Unfortunately, the Oster will not be playing in that stadium because of lack of facility in terms of uh, hostel within the southern uh, part of the country. So we as a board, yes, 
will support the body in collaboration with the clubs who have agreed that we should postpone this week in the ongoing Sierra Leone League. And now the Sierra Leone under-20 female team, the shooting starlets, have departed yesterday for Kenema in the early hours uh, for that training camp. The 36-man delegation, including 22 players and 14 officials, left Freetown for Eastern Region City of Kenema, where the Sierra Leone female under-20 team will be camped in preparation for the West Africa Football Union Wafu Under-20 tournament that will commence on the 22nd of this month and ends on the 3rd of June this year. The total of nine countries will participate in this year's edition of the West Africa Football Union Under-20 Female Tournament. And finally, in the international scene, Inter Milan reached the Champions League final for the first time in 14 years as uh, Lloyd Marcinez's goal sealed the victory over fierce rivals AC Milan last evening at San Siro. As they progressed in a 3-0 aggregate, the three-time winner Inter led 2-0 in the first leg while, uh, while, uh, while faced their Manchester City or uh, Real Madrid in Istanbul on the 10th of June after a displayed second leg uh, uh, performance for ensure they progress to the final. Well, it will be another thriller today in the Champions League between uh, Man City and Real Madrid. Going to the fact that the first leg uh, in Spain ended one all. But that's all for sports. And back to you, Fabian Swill and Samuel Rice Bangwa in the studio. Thank you very much, Ransford McLean, for the uh, sports update this morning. Well, with that, uh, this is what would end today's edition of Wake Up Sierra Leone. Our court for today says the equal right of all citizens to health, education, work, food, security, culture, science, and well-being. That is the same rights we proclaim when we began our struggle in addition to those which emerge from our dreams of justice and equality for all inhabitants of our world is what I wish for all. And it's a quote from Fidel Castro, a Cuban revolutionary politician who also served as Cuban well, president from 1976 to 2008. All right, many thanks to Roquel Commercial Bank for the support to the show. Continue staying with us throughout the day. We have other exciting programs coming up. But until we meet again here with more interesting topics, we have been your presenters. My name is Samuel Weisbangura. And I am Fibian Swill, wishing you a lovely day and a pleasant rest of the week. watching AYV television. For you to have the right cool and fresh air, you need the right air conditioning. And that Havels Lloyd air conditioner. With cutting edge innovation, Havels Lloyd air conditioners are made to handle heavy heat, and it enables a large volume of air to be blown, with minimum power consumption. Lloyd Air Conditioner are available in all types and sizes. Don't worry we have a perfect team of professional technicians to do your installations and after sales care services. With the Havels Lloyd Portable Air Conditioner, you need not to worry about insulation because it is fast and easy to do with no need for technical support. Just slide your window and you are good to go. Buy your Havels Lloyd Air Conditioner today and it will be delivered at your doorstep. Get your Lloyd Air Conditioner today from Inson's at number 52 Siaka Stephen Street and 20 Sanders Street in Freetown. For more information contact 080-012333 or 077-585936 email insons at live.com or you can also buy your Lloyd Air Conditioners online at www.insons.net.